Hi guys, this is our last week of dealing with statistics, so that means we're going to have a test at the end of the week. So our uh, schedule is going to be a little bit different. Today you're still watching the video, obviously. Tuesday and Wednesday we're going to have our Zoom classes together so we can review. And then Thursday and Friday will be the test. Part of it will be on Agilastic and part of it will be on Google uh, Classroom, Google Forms. So, uh, and you'll have until Sunday to do it. So that's four days to take a test. And you can use the notes and go back to these YouTube videos if you need to. And you can use a calculator. So pretty much everybody should do a good job, I would think. Kids notes, get, calculator, yeah, videos. I have to say something. Kids, get excited you're getting a test and don't complain about it. Thank you, Andrew. Yay. All right, a couple of new things that I haven't gone over hard enough um, that will be on the test. And they're things you have to memorize. I'm sorry. But of the things that we've studied, um, we break them down into something called measures of center and measures of variability. So measures of center, center, what's another word for center? Middle. Middle! Yay. Hey, don't we have something that shows us the middle number? I think we do. It's called a median. So shocking. So one of our measures of center is the median because it shows us the number in the middle. And our other measure of center, there's only one more, that is the mean. Because that's like when you add them all up and divide by the number of numbers, you really get the number in the middle. So the mean and the median are your measures of center. Yay. The mode is neither, because the mode could be anything. It's just what's there the most. Now, measures of variability. It comes from the word vary. How do these things vary? How are they different? Like if I had my line up here. They can't see it. I'm getting there. Of EV, mu, and for it. Like if we wanted to talk about how they vary, how they are different. Well, one thing is apparent. They are definitely different sizes. We could talk about how they are different in size. So how would we figure out how they are different in size? We would subtract the highest from the lowest. Oh, wait, that sounds familiar. What is that called? Subtracting the highest from the lowest. That's called range. That's one of your measures of variability. Pretty much any time you subtract you are showing how something varies. So there are two other times or two other things that we learned in the last few weeks where we had to subtract. Range was one of them. The interquartile range. Remember we took the upper median minus the lower median. And the other one that we subtracted with was the mean absolute deviation, which I'm just going to call the MAD. It's, he's mad. He's mad because it's a lot of work. So the two measures of center, median and mean. The three measures of variability, range, interquartile range, and mean absolute deviation. I will definitely be asking you like a check boxes kind of thing on your test. Which ones of these are your measures of center? Which ones of these are your measures of variability? So know that that's going to be on there. Another thing I talked about the first week but I didn't talk a lot about was what is a statistical question? A statistical question has more than one answer. So we can get a data set. So uh, a statistical question would be if I asked everyone out there, how tall are you? I don't think we're all exactly the same height. Or if I asked all of Andrew's friends, what is your favorite video game? Heck, I don't even think Andrew would have the same answer for that week after week. Yeah. So it changes. So there's lots of answers. But if I asked you what 2 plus 2 was, there's only one correct answer. 22! <laughs> we'll work on that later. <laughs> um, or what percent... Um, is three-fourths. 
there's only one answer to that. So if I asked you which one of these is a statistical question, you would have to pick the one with more than one answer. So Andrew, what's the statistical question? Was I supposed what to is be? what is our address? What is our last name? Um, how many cookies do we have in the in the house? Or what is three plus five? I mean, three plus five has to be nine. <laughs> Which one is statistical? Which one isn't? Is there many? There's more than one statistical. No, no. no. Like, no. how many different kinds of cookies do we have in the house? That would be. It changes every day, let's face it, because yeah. I'm eating cookies. That wasn't a good example. If I asked, um, it's hard to do it when there's only one person. Okay, if I asked, um, you know what, we're just going to go on from there. If you have questions on that, we'll talk about that tomorrow. The rest of today is just a review of everything we've done. One last hurrah before you take your test. One last hurrah. One last hurrah. So okay. I already put a data set up here um we ate pizza last night i love pizza so um i was thinking about the number of different toppings different pizza places offer most people it's pepperoni sausage onions broccoli who would put broccoli on a pizza? that's not bad that's not bad people actually put pineapple your dad likes pineapple but one time we ordered delivery, and once we got it in the house, we found out it was broccoli. I was very disappointed. But anyhow, there's a lot of different options you, sh you could get. So I was looking around. I wrote the number of different toppings at different pizza places. So I got 12, 14, 15, 15, 12, 12. 14, 16, 22, 14, 20, 10, 12, 13, 12. Okay. So first review, how do we find the mean? Two steps. First we add all the numbers. Then we divide by the number of numbers. So if we were to add all of these numbers together, and by the magic of television, I've already done it, and I got 200. And we would divide that by how many numbers are in the data set? There are 14. And when we do our division and we round to the nearest whole number, our mean would be? 100 and that, 186. 14. I was close enough. Okay. Next thing we learned was the median. There's also two steps for the median. First, we line up our numbers and then find the one in the middle. All right, so I already have it listed for myself. 10, 12, 12, 12, 12. It's all 12. It is. 13, 13, 14, 14, 14. 15, 15, 16, 20, 20 and 22. 22. All right, so there are 14 numbers here. So there's going to end up being two in the middle. 13 and 14 are in the middle. What do we do when there's two in the middle? Right. Add them together and divide by two. I got a new that was divided. Yep. Yeah. So 13 plus 14 is 27 divided by 2 is 13.5. That's a lot of numbers. It's a big data set. Okay, so that's the median. Mode. Mode is one of our easy ones. We like the mode. The mode is the one that appears the most often. And it's easier, I think, looking at them once they're in line. Which number's there the most? 12. 12 is your mode. Does there have to be a mode? No. And if there's not, you just write no mode. Can you have more than one mode? Yeah. If the 
at the, you know, there was an extra two 13s, it would be 12 and 13. Okay, next up, the range. And again, the range is the highest number minus the lowest number. Well, the most toppings was 22. The least number was 10. So 12 is your range. Now we're going to do the interquartile range. Which is the upper median minus the lower median median. So I'm going to go back up here to where I already have them lined up. Now I had two numbers in the middle. When I have two numbers in the middle, how many lines do I need to make? Oh no, you tell us. I am. You make one. You split it here. So this is your lower quartile. This is your upper quartile. Now we're going to find the middle of each of those. So 12 is your lower. 15 is the upper. So our inner quartile range is just the 15 minus the 12. Hey, what you doing? I'm Which to, is trying to get on the three. number. Okay. Now, next thing we're going to do with this data is we're going to make a box plot. The box plot shows us five pieces of information. It shows us the median, the, which was 13.5. It shows us the low median, which was 12. The upper median, which was 15. The lowest number, which was 10, and the highest number, which was 22. That's it. That's all it shows. So I'm going to make my number line, and I'm going to go by twos. 10, 12, 14, 16. I can space this out a little bit better. So, sorry guys. Oh no, I'm taking up time, Andrew. I'm sorry. Oh wow. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. So, did I do that right? 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. Remember, I take my medians and I make the straight lines. So, 12, 13, and a half, and 15. That's my box. And then I take my whisker from the 10 and my whisker from the 22. And then I kind of label this pizza toppings. Number of toppings at restaurants. I'm going to abbreviate. So there's your box and whisker. So remember, this is always your lowest number. This first line is always your lower median. The line in the middle is your median, upper median, highest number. All right, now we're going to make a histogram from this. There are two parts of a histogram. You remember the first part? Uh, I didn't watch the video. I made the it's video. the if chart, the if chart. I stands for interval, and the F stands for the frequency. So I'm going to do 10 to 12, 13 to 15, 16 to 18, 19 to 21, and 22 to 24. All right, Andrew, help me out again. Read my uh, list of data so I can put my tally marks. Well, 
14, 15, 15, 12, 14. Okay, you got to go a little slower than that. I'm not that good. Okay, I'm just 16. Do the bottom row. 22, 14, 20, 10, 12, 14, 12. Uh, is all of them? Yeah. Okay. So you can see all my tally marks. The second thing I need is my connected bar graph. <gasps> so I take the numbers, my interval, those go on the bottom. Sorry, it's hard to write sideways from the floor here. So if it's hard to read, I apologize. You need to get a filming studio, Andrew. And then my highest tally was six, so I'm just going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the number of restaurants that have it. These are the toppings. Topping number. And then I make my connected bars. Five. Go up to six. And the rest are ones. And then give it a title, number of pizza toppings. Woohoo! Pizza toppings! But you don't like any of them. Oh, jeez, okay. <laughs> All right, so that, there's your histogram. Now we're going to do the same data set. So all of this again. All of this again, but this time we're going to do a line plot or a dot plot. I don't know. Should we make dots or X's? I mean, dots are pretty more exciting. They get everyone hyped up in the room. Dots do that. Well, then by all means, let us use dots. So remember, first step is I just write the numbers on the bottom and draw a line. So 10, 11, 12, 13. I thought I erased my data set for a minute there. I was going to be mad at myself. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Okay, then I just put the dots. 12 gets a dot. 14, 15, and 15. 12, 13, 16, 22. 14, 20, 10, 12, 14, 12. There was a moment of silence. Number of pizza toppings. And then the title again, restaurant. Pizza toppings. Or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Toppings offered. Now, we talked about vocabulary words last week. So, let's go over them again. If I look at the my dots, I can say there is a peak at 12, because 12 is higher. I can say there's a gap at 11, 17 through 19, and 21. I can say there's a cluster. Where is most of the data at? Between 12 and 15, I would say. Yep, 15 and 12. Obviously, this is not symmetrical. They're not perfect. And I can also say, is there an outlier? 22 is kind of an outlier. That's a lot more than most of the others. So that 20 and 20, 20 and 22, I would call them outliers. Remember, it's way different. And I can also say that this graph is skewed. Remember, it's skewed where it's lacking the data. So it's lacking data on this side. So it's skewed on the right. It is skewed. Okay. 
We have one more to go over, and I'm not going to use this data set because it's a lot. And to find the mean absolute deviation, I'd rather use five numbers than 14. So that's our last thing to review, and then we've gone over it all, and you guys should be awesome on your test. Well, I mean, do you think they're all going to use a calculator to solve 2 plus 2? I don't think I'm putting 2 plus 2 on the test. I'm just saying, do you think they'd use a calculator? I don't think they'd need to. My class is smarter than that. I know, right. I'm just saying, like, if it was a different So, um, let's do some test scores, Andrew. What do you think Mr. Furret would be getting on some tests? He'd be getting it 100% each time. He's a meme. Okay, well, we don't want 100% each time. Okay, what about Mew? What would Mew get? Let's give him uh, 89. Okay. Evie. What about Evie? I'm going to punish him. Oh, punish me, you little Evie? Okay, go for it. Just tell me. Let's give him, uh, you know, a, a 20. A 20? Yes! Give him a 20! I don't think Cameron's going to like that one. Pikachu. 92. And we need one more. This long green snake boy dissolves a 50. A 50. I okay. mean. Okay, so we're just going to do five. Three steps to find the mean absolute deviation. I'm so mad Mrs. Scarisich is making us do so much work. Hey, I'd be mad if they gave me one paper of two okay. plus two. It's fine. So, first step is we are going to find the mean. I obviously did not. It's okay. I'm coming back down. I didn't do this ahead of time since Andrew just came up with the scores, but I am going to use my calculator since it is allowed. And again, the mean, I'm going to add the numbers together. 100 plus 89 plus 20 plus 92 plus 50 is 351. And then I'm going to divide that by 5. That's going to give me 70.2. Or 70. Step two is we are going to subtract. We are going to rewrite those five numbers. And subtract the 70. Now remember, you always go high minus low. You never have a negative answer. I'll do the, all, all the answer. I'll do, how about, can I do the last one? Please. Yeah. I haven't used the pencil in years. Oh. It's not even a pencil. Thank you. Okay. And then the third step is we find the mean again, but we find them with those answers we just got. I have a feeling our mean absolute deviation is going to be pretty big because we're going from 100% to a 20%. So again, I add 30 plus 19 plus 50 plus 22 plus 20, which is 141. Too bad you can't use a calculator in your actual class. Actually, they can. I mean, for like a simple problem like that. Oh. We divide that by 5, and our mean absolute deviation is a 28.2%. They're an average of 28% from the mean. Wow. Evie, come on. All right, that's all we have to review today. I will talk to you both tomorrow and Wednesday. We will do review questions together, so you will be ready to go and just do awesome on this statistics test. Now remember, measures of center, mean, median. Measures of variability, you have some subtraction. Range, interquartile range, and mean absolute deviation. And a statistical question has more than one answer. Okay, guys, I will see you tomorrow and um, miss you. Have a good day. Oh, say cheese. <laughs>